Welcome into Blue Plate Special. I'm your host, Andrew Breedlove, and we're here at the headquarters for the fire department for the city of Rocky Mountain. We're going to go inside. We're going to talk to a couple of the guys that work here, and we're going to see what they do to put together a meal for uh, all the guys that are working here. So let's go inside and see what they're up to. All right, well, we're here at fire station number one, the headquarters of the fire department here in Rocky Mountain. I'm joined today by Tim Schra. Tim, you're going to be putting together some wonderful things for us. We're going to start out with some potato salad. All right. Show us what you do. Okay, well, let's, let's hope I put together something that uh, everybody will enjoy. <laughs> um, we got potatoes here already um, boiled and cut up the way I would do it. Um, so main thing is, you know, you get your egg. You, you don't, a lot of potato salad, you get them here, you see them where they're chunky, or, you know, and, or it's real soft, mm -hmm. whatever. But the key to that is, what I feel is you just make sure you boil them, let them sit for a while, and then you come in and you put in the ingredients. So I would right. chop my eggs up. And now you're making this in-house. You're not going out and getting a tub of the pre-made stuff. I mean, no, you're making no. it fresh for the guys. No, the one reason for that is when, when we do that, do it here, a lot of people in, in around town, they see us in the grocery store all the time. Mm -hmm. And what they'll say is, oh, y'all eating good tonight because they think that the Cedar the Rocky Mountain mm -hmm. or the fire department mm -hmm. supplies our meals. But what we do is to cut down on costs, we do it ourselves. Everybody pitches in, so that makes the meal really, really um, economical for mm -hmm. us. Absolutely. So, so chop right. it up like this. You're using a biscuit cutter to do this. Yeah. Or egg cutter. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a versatile tool. <laughs> See it, put it that way. And how many, how many potatoes did you use for this? Uh, we use, uh, this is five pound potatoes. Okay. And um, I have here about four, five boiled eggs. Depends on how many people are eating. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we have so many people over there eat different things. Mm -hmm. um, one person may not like potato salad, he doesn't like boiled potatoes. So we'll try to mix it up, um, put a little bit of this, a little bit of that for everybody so they can enjoy themselves. So you try to make it where everybody can have something they like. That's right. Yeah. And about how many guys normally will, uh, will, you, will you cook for? Well, normally I'm at another station, which I, we, I'm at one of the substations. Okay. Um, where it's four people there. Mm -hmm. But at a station like this, or station uh, six over there on um, Westland Boulevard, um, we have 10 or 12 people here. So this, normally we, the biggest meal I ever cook would be for around 10, mm -hmm. 10 people. Okay. So once I get them chopped up like this here, I just kind of dump them in the pan. And I tell the guys my hands are clean. Yeah, I make sure, I make sure, I try to keep the guys out of my kitchen. Uh, because when I'm cooking, I don't like anybody in here. <laughs> and you're telling me before, you don't really measure. You just I, you do what you think is going to make it taste good. That's, that's right. You know, some people can add things. Some people can. Um, you know, I start with a little bit because, you know, you can, you can add, but you can't take out. You always add, but you can't take out. That's right. And I kind of mix it up, get it all good going. And now, do you put it in there while your potatoes are still kind of hot? Well, I try to. I try not to because what that does, that makes the potatoes turn to get tend to get soft. Mm -hmm. um, and when you're putting different ingredients in, mm -hmm. you, 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 excuse me, you want to um, make sure that it's, it's, you know, some things absorb heat a lot better than others. Yeah. You know, so you want to do your mayonnaise. You don't want it to get. Um, you, you don't want it to get too mushy. Mm -hmm. um, and so you're going to do mayonnaise and mustard. Your mayonnaise and mustard. And, and the guys tell me all the time, well, we, hate, we love his food, but we hate to clean up behind him. <laughs> you know, because he used every tool, in the, uh, everything in the, in the um, kitchen. So just kind of, you know, roll it around a little bit. Fold it over. Yeah. And now, when you uh, when you get into the kitchen, are you the only one that sort of sort of works, whether your your station or this station, or do you do you uh, enlist some of the guys to help you out? Well, sometimes uh, I might let some of the guys ha uh, help me out. Um, mm -hmm. Again, when there's a lot of other things going on without all our class time, mm -hmm. and um, everybody can't break away. Right. Everybody can't break away. So what we do sometimes we will have um, one person break away mm -hmm. and cook, or one person may go to the grocery store and get what we need. Um, but me, I do most of the cooking. Um, not that you don't want everybody cooking, but you know, a lot of guys they say, "Well, he, he, you can he tell it. You can tell the difference." Yeah, he haven't he haven't gone wrong yet, so uh -huh. we don't let him keep going. <laughs> so I just put a little bit in there. Mustard, you don't want to put too much because it's it, you, it's it, you don't want it too dark. Mm -hmm. So I'll just you know, roll it around a little bit, and it all comes together.
and a lot of a lot of times what people do they make it um, too thick you know a lot of with 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 cold with uh, coleslaw with potato salad you know people like it different textures mm -hmm. so is that the key there is how much mustard how much mayo you put in how many um, cubes and the, the, of course the juice of the cube so. Well, now, do you take, uh, do you let the guys tell you kind of what they want, or do you just kind of go with what you're feeling? No, well, what we'll try to do, again, there are so many people, different people uh -huh. that, um, that don't like this or don't like that. So what we'll do in the morning, we'll get together. We'll try to get together and make sure that everybody's on the same page of what we're going to eat so mm -hmm. we can kind of determine the cost. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's normally a joint decision. And it's the hardest decision to make in the fire department. You go around different fire stations, around town, around the country, anywhere, and you ask them, well, what's the hardest thing? Fighting fire is not the hardest. It's the decision on what we're going to have. Absolutely, absolutely. So you're putting a little bit of sugar in your potato salad. Yeah. And uh, for a lot of folks, I I've learned this in a southern kitchen, you can put sugar in just about anything. Yeah, just as long as you don't put too much. Just put too much, yeah, yeah, exactly. As long as you don't put too much. And, and, and sugar will um, kind of liquefy Mm -hmm. A lot of things, mm -hmm. so that's normally what I'm, that's what I'm trying to do here. Just, and I can see here just by you know what, what normally how I make it that I'm put a little bit more mayo in. Mm -hmm. And now, do you cook like this at home? I have to ask. To be honest, my wife does all the cooking. <laughs> um, uh, at the fire station, she, I think she feel like you know. Uh, I'll eat anything. Uh -huh. You know, the guys do a lot of hunting. The guys do, I, I might try to, yeah. you know, give her some deer instead of uh -huh. a steak. So she ain't, she's not going to trust me on that one. But um, she, she does most of the cooking. Put, you know, a lot of people want potato salad with a little pimento in it. Some mm -hmm. people want potato salad with a little, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, celery seeds in it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, 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 Olives. Yeah, they yeah all put, sorts you know, of stuff. And, and, and everybody put their little twist on it. And, um, but again, from a standpoint of us having to, 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 to buy the meal mm -hmm. and, and make us, sure everybody can eat. And, yeah, that's right. And yeah. a lot of times in the middle of cooking, we got to get up and go, you know, so we, we, we tend to sometimes waste a lot of meal, mm -hmm. not because, but it's because of how, you know, it's our job, you know, mm -hmm. we got to get up and go at any point in any time. Mm -hmm. So we try to be as, uh, as convenient, as quickly as possible. Yeah and save as much money and keep the cost down for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's it right there for the potato salad. Uh, we can go now, what we're, the other thing we're gonna do, we're gonna make uh, a coleslaw. Okay. And I can show you what, what I do to do the, um, put the ingredients for the coleslaw and put that together. Then we also, we're gonna have cabbage, steamed uh, cabbage. Today's show at the Rocky Mount Fire Department is brought to you by Fred's Food Club, home of rock bottom prices where you never need a membership. If you want some good food, come to the Smokehouse Barbecue. Come out to the swingiest restaurant in town, Rubens, featuring great food and great music. Our new lunch menu features the best sandwiches in town. Rubens in the Tiffany Square Shopping Center in Rocky Mount. Ann's Donuts serves the best donuts in town because we fix them the old-fashioned way. From cream cheese filled to our famous chocolate glazed, Ann's Donuts are second to none. But Ann's is also a specialty baker. Wedding cakes, birthday cakes, ice cream cakes, custom designed for your event. You must also visit our gift shop filled with gifts and holiday decor for your home and office. We have scarves, jewelry pocketbooks, holiday wreaths, and more. Come see us for your next sweet treat. Ann's Donuts, serving our area since 1952. 
Williams of Wilson, an enchanted restaurant in the heart of downtown. We feature fresh and house-made items such as our pork and vegetable-filled wontons and our one-of-a-kind cheesesteak egg rolls. Our Cuban sandwich with house-made pickles is a local favorite. Or stop in for dinner and enjoy our pan-seared duck breast with scallops. Whether it's lunch or dinner, think Williams of Wilson for that next wonderful meal. Fine food, spirits, and a good time await you at Williams of Wilson, 124 Barn Street, Wilson. joined today by Randy Lanham. Uh, Randy, how long have you been with the Rocky Mount Fire? Altogether, I've been here about uh, eight years. Okay, all yeah. right. Well, you do a great job. We appreciate all that the fire department does in our community. Uh, one thing we want to remind people of, I know we're showing people how to cook and mm -hmm. some different things, but we want to remind everybody, you need to be safe while you're doing it. Let's That's go right. over some safety tips. Well, basically, I'm the cook here at headquarters. This is my shed, like Tim's at Station 3. Mm -hmm. I like my area open, you know, okay. All the firemen, you know, that's not rolling in here by 4.30. Mm -hmm. So my rule is don't cross that line right there. You know, this is my area, mm -hmm. let me cook. Uh, one thing, one of the biggest cause of fires in Rocky Mount is kitchen fires, unattended fires. And that comes from anything from a rag on the stove close to a open flame, you don't want to do that, or a frying pan catching on fire while you're frying food. The easiest way to do, put out a fire is to cover it up. That's the motto, put a lid on it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to grab it and throw it in the sink. But when you do that, you're throwing grease, you're throwing fire all over your house. Mm -hmm. uh, so whenever you, you have some, a, a problem on the stove, put a lid on it. Don't, don't try to contain it with water or move it elsewhere and create right. a bigger problem. Right. Cover it up. Cover it up. If you put water, if you grab some water and throw it in the frying pan, you're throwing that grease right on top mm -hmm. of you. Then you've got burn injuries you got to deal with, as well as the fire. A lot of fires, they try to put it out their self and it gets bigger. You know, get out, call 911 after you put a lid on it. You know, grab an oven mitt, carry it with you. Mm -hmm. If you're on the phone, you know, your phone rings, you're on the phone, when you hang up, mm -hmm. put the phone down, you got the oven mitt in your hand. So give yourself a little a little friendly reminder that, oh yeah, I've got something That's going right. on in the Man, kitchen. I gotta get back to the kitchen. Well, you know, you take the broiler, for example, you put something in the oven, you put it on broil. If right. you don't remember, in just a couple of minutes, you can go from raw to, to burnt to, having a fire on that's right and, and speaking of that in the oven if you have an, a fire in the oven you want to just keep the door closed a lot of people go to open it up and that's giving oxygen to the fire mm -hmm. that's going to increase the fire another thing we have in the city is fire stop stove top vent hood extinguishing it. what this does this will go right up underneath the hood by a magnet and once the fire hits that point it drops fire extinguisher powder on it. okay so if you have a stove fire and the flames get up and it hits this fire stop, it'll actually uh, go and try to contain the fire. The powder will come down just like a fire extinguisher mm -hmm. and put the fire out. Okay. Um, another thing. And that's something, now is that something that if you were to get that, if you were to get a, get a stovetop fire stop, is that something you have to change out regularly or is that something that can stay up there for a pretty good while? You can stay in there until it's used. Also, you need to have a, a working smoke detector. You know, a lot of people don't mm -hmm. think about this. We give these out free to the city. Um, Call any fire station, we'll schedule an appointment, we'll come out here and install your fire, your smoke detector. Well, talk about placement of, of a, a smoke detector. I mean, I, a lot of people don't like them in the kitchen because, you right. know, you get something kind of smoky and it just sets off all the bells and everything. That's right. Should you have one in the kitchen? Should you have it close to the kitchen? Where should you put it? We like to put them in the next room from the kitchen. Okay. Because, like I said, if you're in the kitchen and you do burn your bread in the oven, you open up that door, mm -hmm. the smoke is going to mm -hmm. set the alarm off. Mm -hmm. So to keep it the next room over, and you want it at every bedroom, mm -hmm. you know, outside of every bedroom. So. And remind everybody, how often should you check the batteries in your smoke alarm? We recommend every time the time changes, but it's good to check it once a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. First of every month. So, or just you in here cooking yourself is where your handles are on your stove. Like this one's sticking out. This is something you don't want to do. You want to turn that handle the other way. If you've got a pot here, you know, turn it back around. Because the easiest thing to do is hit it, and then you've got hot liquids on top of you, which is gonna cause severe burns. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so keep it in, put a lid on it, have a fire extinguisher handy. They sell fire extinguishers at Home Depot, Lowe's, mm -hmm. um, any hardware store. Uh, that way, if it does happen, you can try to put it out. Okay. Well, safety tips from Randy Lanham right here at the Rocky Mountain Fire, fire Department.
Williams and Wilson, an enchanted restaurant in the heart of downtown. We feature fresh and house-made items such as our pork and vegetable-filled wontons and our one-of-a-kind cheesesteak egg rolls. Our Cuban sandwich with house-made pickles is a local favorite. Or stop in for dinner and enjoy our pan-seared duck breast with scallops. Whether it's lunch or dinner, think Williams of Wilson for that next wonderful meal. Fine food, spirits, and a good time await you at Williams of Wilson, 124 Barn Street, Wilson. Ann's Donuts serves the best donuts in town because we fix them the old-fashioned way. From cream cheese filled to our famous chocolate glazed, Ann's Donuts are second to none. But Ann's is also a specialty baker. Wedding cakes, birthday cakes, ice cream cakes, custom designed for your event. You must also visit our gift shop filled with gifts and holiday decor for your home and office. We have scarves, jewelry pocketbooks, holiday wreaths, and more. Come see us for your next sweet treat. Ann's Donuts, serving our area since 1952. The best kept secret in town is the Chew and Chat Cafe, classic southern cooking with style. Start your day right at Chew and Chat Cafe with a plate of eggs cooked your way or with our infamous hobo breakfast sandwich or make the Chew and Chat your regular spot. Our daily specials and homemade recipes are one of a kind with prices that can't be beat. From our hand patty burgers to our homemade chicken pot pie, shrimp creole, and pimento cheese, Chew and Chat is sure to be a great meal. And Friday night is fish night, featuring fried flounder, trout, and catfish, and our homemade banana pudding. We use local ingredients and cook everything fresh to order. So stop waiting and head on down to Chew and Chat Cafe, 1005 West Mount Drive in Rocky Mountain. Or call us about catering your next event. Open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., and Wednesday through Friday for dinner, starting at 5. Chew and Chat Cafe. Classic Southern cooking with style. Today's show at the Rocky Mount Fire Department is brought to you by Fred's Food Club, home of rock bottom prices where you never need a membership. So let's, let's see what you do. All right, I got, got my, I got my cabbage already cut up. Uh, what I got here is I got so, some, some mayo. And what I'll do is I'll kind of stir it up and get it. Get a little bit of air in there. Yeah, whip it out, whip it up a little bit. And get my mustard. Now you're gonna put the mustard in the, in the mayonnaise. Yeah, put yeah. mustard in the mayonnaise. Again, you don't want to put too much mustard. Mm -hmm. um, just want to kind of get it a good yellow tint. Now I'll put the sugar in there. Okay. It's kind of hard to gauge the amount of sugar because it's, you know, really every uh, cabbages are different. Mm -hmm. um, and so you don't want it too sweet. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I, I don't know if I've ever seen anybody actually put it all together before they put it into the cabbage. Oh, yeah? Yeah, that's a, that's a neat little technique. I'm going to have to try that. You, yeah. One of our producers saying she's never seen that before either. Well, wait till you taste it. It's funny whenever you go into somebody's kitchen and mm -hmm. you see little things that they do, and it says little things that really uh, sort of ma it's make the difference. Yeah, that should, that should come out pretty good. And so what I do then is I just kind of mix everything in. And I kind of stir it all up. Now with the potato salad as well as the coleslaw, this is something that's great that, say if you do have a fire and you have to run, put it in the fridge, yeah, you put it finish in. it when you get back, or you know, just put it in the fridge so when you get back it's ready for it's you. It's ready, that's right. Um, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to, as we talk, we're going to talk about some safety tips um, at a later, later time in the show, um, and we're going to talk about things that you can walk away from, and things that you, that you shouldn't mm -hmm. walk, that you shouldn't leave. Mm -hmm. And like, like you said, Eric, yeah, this is one of the things that you can leave and come back and finish up. Um, 
But this is pretty much it on making coleslaw. Wow, that's simple, but it, he's done these little things that are really, uh, I think, going to make it excellent. Uh, I've never, again, I've never seen anybody mix the mayonnaise and the mustard and the sugar together. Mm. It's a nice little trick. And now you, you used shredded cabbage. Um, I noticed it was really fine as well. How did you go about shredding that? We actually, we, we chopped it. You chopped yes, it? It's an old, old um, salad chopper. Okay. And they, these things here are really hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, but they're, they're, they're worth the wait and go. Mm -hmm. they, they really are. Um, I like them because you can determine how you want it. Uh, if you put mm -hmm. it in a processor, it's going to come out just like mm -hmm. whatever button you hit it. Absolutely. Um, so I like it doing it this way. All right. So there you have it, everybody. Tim's uh, famous coleslaw. And as it sits in the refrigerator, it will, um, a lot of times I say, well, you, you may think it's not, um, doesn't have enough juice in it or the consistency is not mm -hmm. right. But as, you say, it, as it sits, you know, it will, it, that sugar mm -hmm. will pull the juices out of it, pull mm -hmm. the water out of that cabbage, and it, it should come out pretty, pretty good. All right, Tim, well, we've seen some potato salad, we've seen some coleslaw, and now we have moved on to the cabbage. Yes. And you were just telling us at the break that uh, you do your cabbage a little bit different. Yes. Tell us a little bit about it. Um, what I do is, I, of course, I get my cabbage. Uh, we're doing steamed cabbage. Um, I put, um, I, like, I like a different taste, kind of a, a sweeter taste when mm -hmm. you eat. And, and what I found that if you take an onion and a bell pepper and you mix it together, that it, it, it kind of sweetens it up a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and being that we shorthanded on measuring tools, <laughs> uh, I just put, uh, I try to gauge it myself. That's a fire station tablespoon. Yeah, yeah. I kind of stir it all up together. And you said steam. What, it, what, what's the key to steaming the cab? Is, is, it, is it limiting just, the amount of water yeah, you have just, in there? Just put a little bit of water mm -hmm. in it. Because what it is, uh, cabbage produces a lot of its own mm -hmm. water. Yeah. And I'll take a, uh, some bell pepper here. This is a whole bell pepper, but I'm not going to put it all in there. I'm probably use about, about a half a bell pepper in it. And again, the mixture of the bell pepper and the onion adds just yeah, a little bit I'm, of sweetness to it. That's right. Okay, and then you just kind of mix it all up together. And it doesn't take long for a, a actual cabbage to, to steam a cabbage. Mm -hmm. And again, this is something that you do you, you do quite often because it's it's uh, easy to get together. Right, so Tim, we, we we've looked at the coleslaw, we've looked at potato salad. Those are a couple of things that if you fix and you have to run out for a fire, you can leave alone. Come back to them later. Cabbage though is not not quite like that. No, uh, what we what we've learned um, and uh, is that anything that you actually got to that that you uh, keep going on an open fire, mm -hmm. you don't you definitely don't want to leave that. Mm -hmm. um, even though there are times here when we do leave that because we have three three engine companies at this particular station here, uh, we can say, hey, look, I got something on the stove. Somebody can come here and watch it. So we may walk away from it, but mm -hmm. make sure we let somebody know. Um, when I'm at, uh, at my station normally, um, I'm not going to do that because there's nobody there for me to leave. And when you're at home, uh, you don't want to leave a child trying right. to uh, maintain uh, managing uh, the meal that you're trying to cook. Doing prep. And, and I think that's key. You know, you, you have situations here where you might have to leave. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing, you know, at, at home, you want to make sure that you're not putting things together and then you're getting distracted mm -hmm. uh, where it could cause a problem. That's right. Uh, and and you, I make sure I don't get confused with where I am mm -hmm. uh, at home. You know, I, I'm, nobody's there, you know, but when I'm here, you know, there may be somebody that I can leave in to, to attend it while I'm gone. But normally, just get in the habit of cutting things off um, when, you, uh, when, when you cook it. Um, again, anything that you use on a stove, uh, where you, on an open flame, you want to make sure that you're going to, that, that you can, uh, that you leave it um, attended in some shape or form. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're cooking out like we're going to be going today where we're outside in the grill, well, that's fine because we're going to be back and forth. So even though we're going to walk away from it, people may say, well, he walked away from it. And that's a different story. Get it, get, uh, make sure you understand that we're going just from this point to the other. We're really, we're walking away from it, but we're not leaving it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and as I said, one thing about a cabbage, once it gets boiling, 
you can let it start, you can let it simmer. Mm -hmm. and I'm gonna put that right there. And then you just kind of come back and stir it occasionally. Yeah, and again, cabbage has a lot of its own liquid, and See? once you start to cook it, a lot of that liquid's gonna cook out. Yeah. And that didn't take long at all. Mm -hmm. It smells great, too. I can smell the onion and the bell pepper, and I can smell the, red, the uh, crushed red pepper. And then I'll just drop the heat down on it a little bit and let it cook. Uh, we've been cooking this probably about 10 minutes or so. Um, what I'll do is I'll let it simmer and for maybe another 10 minutes, then I'll just put the lid on it. And if it's a while, let's say if this, uh, if, if we're gonna eat at five o'clock, mm -hmm. which that's what time we normally try to eat between mm -hmm. five and 5.30, um, some of the guys, it's a ritual for them. They may see their faces pressed up against the window <laughs> at five o'clock, wanna know when supper's gonna be ready. So I'll just let this sit here, drop it down a little bit, and again, I'll just let this lid sit on it. Next thing I got here is um, <clears throat> regular brownie meat, chocolate brownie. I want to do it rib side down because there's not that much meat on the rib, on, on the rib side. Ann's Donuts serves the best donuts in town because we fix them the old-fashioned way. From cream cheese filled to our famous chocolate glazed, Ann's Donuts are second to none. But Ann's is also a specialty baker. Wedding cakes, birthday cakes, ice cream cakes, custom designed for your event. You must also visit our gift shop filled with gifts and holiday decor for your home and office. We have scarves, jewelry pocketbooks, holiday wreaths, and more. Come see us for your next sweet treat. Ann's Donuts, serving our area since 1952. The best kept secret in town is the Chew and Chat Cafe, classic southern cooking with style. Start your day right at Chew and Chat Cafe with a plate of eggs cooked your way or with our infamous hobo breakfast sandwich or make the Chew and Chat your regular spot. Our daily specials and homemade recipes are one of a kind with prices that can't be beat. From our hand patty burgers to our homemade chicken pot pie, shrimp creole, and pimento cheese, Chew and Chat is sure to be a great meal. And Friday night is fish night, featuring fried flounder, trout, and catfish, and our homemade banana pudding. We use local ingredients and cook everything fresh to order. So stop waiting and head on down to Chew and Chat Cafe, 1005 West Mountain Drive in Rocky Mountain. Or call us about catering your next event. Open Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., and Wednesday through Friday for dinner, starting at 5. Chew and Chat Cafe. Classic Southern cooking with style. 